planet Earth is the most comfortable environment for its inhabitants. But if you go a few hundred kilometers higher, a human being, a fragile creature made of bones, blood, muscles, and irrepressible curiosity, will begin to feel terrible discomfort and without special protective attributes will simply die. What happens if you go further into the depths of our galaxy? What skeletons in the closet the universe has hidden from us? First, there, as in many galactic centers, is the Sagittarius A black hole. But it turns out this is not all that awaits future travelers in the Dark Kingdom. Meet the Great Annihilator, an object located in relative proximity to the Milky Way's main black hole. And while its name is a bit frightening to the unsophisticated ear, Hello. Let's try to figure out what it is. The code number of the Great Annihilator is quite long. 1E17-29942. So for simplicity, it is called not by numbers, but by words. By the way, the letter E in the code indicates that the object was first discovered at the Einstein Observatory. Before explaining what is hidden under this pathos name, try to guess a small intellectual rebus. If you collide particles and antiparticles and do it inside a huge singular vortex, what will be the result? The correct answer is that both will disappear and a third will be formed instead. A distant analogy can be given for understanding. Imagine that you have thrown an apple and a pear into a bucket, but you get grapes out of it. In brief, this is the essence of the annihilation process. By the way, the translation of this concept means annihilation or annulment. So what is the Great Annihilator? This microquasar is the neighbor of the Sagittarius A black hole. Again, the question is, what is a microquasar? If we drop the prefix micro, it is something similar to quasars, active nuclei of young galaxies in any case. We're Working on the same principle, only quasars are supermassive black funnels that devour everything around them, and microquasars are X-ray double star systems where one object is an ordinary luminary and the second is a neutron star or even a black hole. In this strange cosmic tandem, one partner acts as a cannibal, continuously eating the matter of the second. The process is accompanied by red-hot sporadic ejections, or jets, flying out from both sides of the microquasar at near-light speeds. It is thanks to the dazzling flashes that it is possible to observe these deadly duets. The first such object was discovered in the last century, or rather, in 1978 thanks to astronomers at Cambridge University. Compared to its big brother, the Quasar, the Great Annihilator may not be such a spectacular object, but that's only by the standards of the universe. On our tiny scale, a microquasar is a pretty frightening thing. But let's return to the description of the Great Annihilator, located near the constellation of Serpentor. Who first observed it? The primacy belongs to the Einstein Observatory, and then the information was confirmed by the International Orbiting Observatory Garnet. The telescope, named after the legendary physicist, observed the microquasar in the soft X ray range, and the second observatory considered it in the hard. Further studies showed that the object annihilates particles by transforming electron-positron pairs. The length of jets formed in this case tentatively reaches one and a half parsecs, and the Great Annihilator itself, according to the conclusions of astronomers, is located closer to us than the black hole in the center of the galaxy because it is located with it on the same beam of view. Hence the question, is this object a danger to Earth's civilization? Previously, similar fears arose also about the distant neighborhood of a black hole in the center of the Milky Way. This is not surprising because people are always afraid of the incomprehensible. The central regions of galaxies over the years have consistently attracted the interest of scientists because the study of these regions is much more difficult. 
Previously, it was thought that in the heart of the Milky Way are not present active formations, which is strange in itself, because in the rest of the star clusters, they were usually observed. In this case, the proverb about a speck in someone else's eye, which you notice, but in your own, and the log cannot see. Later, the fairness of the proverb was confirmed. In 1991, with the help of the receiver Sigma, created by Russian and French engineers, scientists found in the center of the Milky Way source of annihilation. It was located about 120 parsecs from the heart of the galaxy. It is noteworthy that no radiation, optical or infrared, the strange formation did not detect, but in the radio range recorded jets, with furious speeds flying in opposite directions. It was a momentous day. It was then that scientists realized that the center of the Milky Way is not empty at all. Determined that the Great Annihilator, most likely, is a microquasar astronomers helped astronomers by analogy. Earlier, in 1964, in the constellation of Swan was discovered in the binary system, emitting X-ray radiation. Their black hole and its companion, a blue supergiant, allowed astronomers to draw parallels and correctly identify the Great Annihilator. It would be a long time before in 2000, 2002, scientists discovered a compact radio source, Sagittarius A pre, directly linked to the black hole, although at first astrophysicists had no idea what they were up against. Why? Yes, because the mass of the object, according to refined representations, amounted to 4.3 million solar at a radius of only 45 astronomical units. What else could it be but a supermassive black hole? Two groups working separately came to similar conclusion, so in 2020, their leaders were awarded the Nobel Prize for their significant contribution to astronomy. Perhaps there are more surprises waiting for us in the pitch darkness, interspersed with huge luminaries. We can't rule it out. The galactic center of the Milky Way is 2,000 parsecs in diameter, and that's relatively small compared to its total area. It is there, in the heart of the huge spiral, that star formation is taking place right now. In the same location is the bulge, an inner sphere characteristic of spiral galaxies. Ancient stars inhabiting the bulge carried at speeds of up to 270 km per second, and a full revolution around the center make approximately 24 million years. In 2016 and 2018, scientists from different countries, in particular Japan, on the basis of additional research, claimed that there are many more black holes in the center of the Milky Way than claimed. So how many could there be? Some astronomers believe that the number of such objects reaches up to 20,000. However, not all black holes located at a distance of parsecs from the central monster supermassive. So black holes, born stars, microquasars, the Great Annihilator. Warm company, isn't it? Since the Milky Way is our common home, humanity cannot remain indifferent to such neighbors. If about Sagittarius A and the associated black hole, we can temporarily calm down because the vortex is still in a dormant state. Gamma ray bursts or jets are a real danger to any objects in their path. Relativistic jets of red hot plasma plasma traveling at near light speeds shown to us by the great annihilator lurking at the center of the milky way are the most epic electromagnetic events in the universe though less spectacular than quasars in general, jets are produced not only by accretion, which occurs when one object eats the matter of another, but also by neutron star mergers, black hole collisions, or supernova explosions. Most of these monstrous outbursts release a crazy amount of energy in a few seconds, about as much energy as the sun does in 10 billion years, that is, in a lifetime. Do you think that's a lot? What would happen if such a beam reached 
Earth, or at least the outskirts of the solar system. Fortunately, the Great Annihilator, surrounded by dense gas dust clouds, does not boast very long jets, and it is about 5,000 light years away from us. But if it's shown instead of Proxima Centauri, the nearest star to us besides the Sun, gamma ray bursts would certainly reach the surface of the Earth and provoke a mass extinction of species. Given all the findings, the center of our galaxy is like a quest room of enormous proportions. You never know what awaits you in the next gas dust cloud. It seems that the universe works like the Escape Room series of games. Press the wrong button and you start the self-destruct process. This is not humor. Everything in the macrocosm is so closely interconnected that any failure can have global consequences, the results of which will be felt even on Earth. Stay with Hubble and learn a lot of interesting things about the events happening in the universe.